Hey, what's up? What, 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 what's up? I uh, am gonna start over on this. Um, what are you doing? Just get, get, let's see what I can do. The scale of this for the person I'm making it for who is Six. three years old. Probably a little big. I want to knock this one out though. I want to knock it out really fast. I want to take all the skills that I've learned from doing this feller. Just do it better and maybe do it a little quicker. Always with the... Anyways, uh, first thing I need to do is clean up my workspace here because it's kind of messy. Let's clean this up. Okay, so I'm gonna use some patterns from Adam Krutinger. It's uh, in the description. It's a small fry pattern. I'm gonna do a little customization. Now I need to deal with this mess over here. I need to hook up my printer and print it out. Okay, so I got the patterns printed out. It has leg and feet. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I wasn't planning on doing that with uh, this feller either. So let's get these cut out. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and gather up all the materials I think I'm gonna need. Also, I have that uh, steel metal bottoms, metal steel, and some various needles. So I'm thinking I'm gonna try to do the sewing machine again, but if it doesn't work out um, immediately, I'm gonna go ahead and hand sew everything. Let's do this. Okay guys, so as you can see, I have some more Nyla fleece from puppetpelts.com. I had my niece Ayla pick out whatever color she wanted for her skin and she chose this yellow. But since I went to school on that one and I feel like I've let her down, I guess I'll just continue to let her down. I already used too much of that stuff. I don't have enough to make another full puppet. So um, if she doesn't like this one, then guess what? I'll probably make another one. As annoying as that is, I'm like that. So I think I have everything I need. Let's, uh, let's get started. see I decided right away because there's no seam allowance here that I'm gonna go ahead and sew it by hand because I'm just gonna avoid all the frustration of the sewing machine so let's get to sewing all right there's a lot of sewing on this project a lot of sewing by hand I end up sewing everything by hand so it might be kind of boring just to watch sewing, but I really wanted to include everything that I did so it might give you the confidence to tackle this project if you're interested in doing it yourself and you can get a good idea of actually like how much there is to really do. Difficulty level on this was low. It, it's not hard to do. It just takes a while. I think all the segments of the sewing are sped up like 10,000%. Also, I'm sure everyone's sewing skills are different, so some people are probably going to sew faster than others. I really don't have any skills so I'm sure it takes me a lot longer than it should.
yeah, just sew down the line. I didn't sew the mouth, obviously, and I have that pinned. All that's left is to sew down the whole front seam there. So I'm just gonna zip that right up. I really do believe that anybody can do this. Um, you know, this is my second attempt at making a puppet and it's really not hard. There's a lot to it and I definitely learned some new skills, but for sure anybody can do this, especially if you're using Adam Kruttinger's uh, patterns. And also if you're making your own patterns, I've done that a little bit and that's not difficult. I just think I need to, I need a little more practice doing it to get exactly the shapes that I want and get the fabric to lay the way that I want. But even that's not that big a deal, I don't think. Okay, I need to cut out the um, fabric mouth plate, which I'm gonna do with this red velvet fabric. I just need to sew this in. All right, now I'm gonna trace out the foam head pattern twice and construct the foam head with a little contact in it. And for this, I'll be using this half inch project foam. been about 15 minutes so now I just need to stick these together and the same with these two halves all right now I'm gonna take this lid from a plastic container get out the two mouth plates Sand the edges. Now I'm gonna glue one of those to this. The other one is the bottom jaw. Attach this and line up the little mark that was on the pattern with the center mark of the skull. Now we need to glue this here. This one here will go on the top. 
And this one here will go on the bottom. So I need to add rubber cement to the edge of all this stuff. Let's try and stick these on. Just need to turn this inside out. And now that that's done, I just wanted to show you the difference in the scale of these two. I think this right here makes a lot more sense for a six-year-old than this big mamajama. Okay, now that we're to this point, I need to cut the hands out of the foam, which I'm gonna use the uh, same half-inch foam, or I might use inch foam and then just cut those in half. That way I only gotta cut them out twice. Yeah, let's get to making the arms. Okay, now I need to take the armature wire and these rods that I have to make the arm rods. Okay, so to make these skeleton hands, you cut your armature wire about eight inches and you cut eight of them, four for each hand. Uh, you're gonna fold them in half and loop them through the loop on the arm rod and then just twist them up. And then you'll see when I lay them on the foam hands, I have like an excess hanging over the fingertips and I just mark those, cut them off and then bend them back so they don't poke through eventually, hopefully. Day two, here's where we are. We got the body done, the head and body rather, and we got the two hands um, on the arm rods. We gotta add the, the wood dowels, and we have to skin these bad boys up, which I've considered using the sewing machine on. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I may just go ahead and bite the bullet and sew it by hand, which I think is gonna also be like, just kind of a pain. Maybe not, maybe more of a meditation. Either way, let's do it. these both uh, stitched up. So now I'm going to cut them out and we will turn them inside out. All right, we're 
we're back. I'm gonna get the uh, hands stuffed into the hand skin, and um, then we're gonna probably sew the arms onto the body. Maybe start figuring out the face. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Let's find out. Let's find out. <laughs> If you guys want to learn a little bit more about making these arms and stuff, I have another video that you can check out where I make two sets because I completely destroy one. It's terrible. But I think maybe I go into a little more detail on that in the other video. I actually talk about what I'm doing a little more, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here what I'm doing. <laughs> Now that those are done, I'm going to sew them on, and I had previously marked where they go, so I just stuck a pin through that, I could find it on the other side, and then I just tried to sew around that pin so it was exactly where those marks were, and I'm sure it's off a little bit, but it worked great. Is that a baby carrot Bluetooth? Oh my god, oh my god, oh god. Oh god. Oh my god, oh god. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make the pattern for the hair. So I want to put a pin where I want the front, the hairline to be. I think maybe right about that will come down to here, maybe the top of the ear. So here's the skull. So I kind of want to go with the skull. And then I'm going to put one more on the middle and the back. So now I'm going to lay this out until it's flat. I can lay it flat on that area, figure out where my darts need to go, if there's going to be darts. And then draw the hairline. And I'm gonna draw the I'll draw the center line here as well. So I'll just flip the pattern so it'll be symmetrical on both sides. So when cutting fur, it's better to use a blade, a razor blade, instead of scissors because if you can imagine cutting along those lines with scissors, you're actually cutting the fur itself too. So using a blade, you cut the least amount of fur possible. And then you just pin them together and you sew up the darts and then you sew the center line and then you've got a perfect little wig for your puppet. just have to sew the wig on the puppet which I didn't get this exactly right it's off a little bit like I had made some little scoops on the side for the ears and I just didn't line it up correctly so it's not perfect but again 
you know, it's just a puppet, and I think that it ended up looking great. I was very pleased. Just got the eyes painted. I'm gonna cut and drill the handles for the arm arms and glue those in. And then we're gonna work on the face. list of what's left. I do want to show you that I have changed the size of the nose. I seam ripped it out. I thought it was just a little too big. Uh, and I have the ears pinned in roughly where I want them. All right, so the punch list is, I gotta sew on the ears. I gotta do the pupils. Style the hair, add a ponytail. Am I gonna add teeth or not? I don't know. I have an idea for teeth. I might add teeth. I might not. I don't know yet. I gotta do the shirt and the skirt because she's like a ballerina. Um, I still haven't put the handles for the arm rods, so I need to drill those and glue those on. And then I'm going to do a headband that has ears and a unicorn horn. I already 3D modeled one test. Um, I didn't like the way this one came out, so I redid it. This is just the headband part. I'm gonna see how much of this I can knock out this evening. It is 11.26 in the p.m. And um, I gotta work tomorrow, so let's go ahead and get to it. You know, all the sewing I ended up doing on this definitely gave me a lot more confidence moving forward. I think I'd like to try to make a plushie instead of a puppet and I already have something in mind that I'm going to be doing that's in the pipeline so it should be coming in the near future and yeah just another example of practice makes perfect or at least practice gets you another step towards perfect and you should just keep trying if you suck at it because you're just gonna suck until you don't.
some glue. Elmer's glue, it's water soluble. So I want to start to style this hair a certain way. I'm just gonna wet it down at first. Everywhere I want the glue. I'm just gonna get some glue. Work that in. I, I sewed this up, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it on, which I need to do from the bottom up. And also this hair isn't exactly dry, but I wanna go ahead and cinch this up and maybe tie it off. I can't find a rubber band anywhere. So I'm just gonna maybe use some fishing line and just tie it up, maybe even hit it with a little bit of that super glue, baby. Oh, actually I ought to use thread so it'll soak up the super glue. Ah, okay, perfect. So I am going to 3D print the headband, which I've modified from this practice version. I've added a unicorn horn and two ears, and I'm gonna print that in white. Wipes. And then I wasn't sure how I was gonna do the pupils, but I had an idea today to use googly eyes, and I'm just gonna cut the pupils out of here and glue them on to old girl's eyeballs. So we're almost there. I need to make some kind of hair tie. I'm just gonna try something. Here's the finished. You can see it has all the supports left on it. But it looks pretty good, it's pretty smooth. So I'm just gonna get this off here and clean it up. hair ready. Um, I have a couple of ideas on how I'm going to attach it, although I'm not 100% sure just yet, but I have some ideas. I think this matches pretty good as far as the color goes. And then I made this that will hide however I end up attaching it. Hopefully 
that's the plan anyways. But other than that, I'm just going to add this, kind of do the final assembly of everything and see how she looks. I am going to sew this on so it will cinch up around it and stay up. I don't think I need to sew the shirt on because it won't be able to come off. And I think having it loose in there is somebody sticking their hand inside is a little bit better anyways. Okay, so I glued this bamboo skewer in here. I'm not exactly sure what my plan is here, but the idea, I'm gonna cut this off somewhere around here maybe. And then I was thinking I could just do the old thread and super glue trick. And then I can sew this around it to hide that joint. I don't really have any other ideas, so I'm gonna go for that. take just a little bit of this fabric glue and I'm just gonna try to like finalize some of this, make some of this stick. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, this was a lot of fun. I do feel like I've redeemed myself. I feel good about having finished this. This took me about a week to complete, working a couple hours a night. I really liked the uh, integration of the 3D printer into this project, and that's really why I got it. I think it's cool to add another tool to the arsenal of tools. <laughs> So I'm gonna send this off. Hopefully we get a video response in the form of a music video using this puppet. I will share that with you when it arrives. I definitely learned uh, some things doing this one as well. I hadn't really thought about the thread color being a factor, but yeah, I think people who sew already understand that. I don't think I would have put the teeth on the bottom. I put the teeth on the top first to see what I thought, and I loved that. And then I was just, you know, holding the teeth on the bottom, and I kind of pinned them on. I really liked the way that it looked. However, they ended up being taller on the bottom, and I thought about taking a razor blade and trying to just cut those off. I thought about just pulling it off. It doesn't look terrible, and I thought I just want to kind of move forward and and learn from this and the next one, I'll know. I also forgot to do eyelids because I really needed to do that before I glued the eyes on. You know, I really wanted to finish this in a week. A six year old has been waiting long enough. So let's send it off and see what she thinks. Later. <laughs>